welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to digitize some lettering and put it on a greeting card and also make that greeting card print ready. So from start to finish, everything you need to know to be able to reproduce this, to have it print ready, and to even, let me show you here, we're gonna end up with a PDF that even has crop marks. So you can trim it down and it'll be perfectly sized. So this is a five by seven once folded uh, greeting card that's inches. It will fit into any A7 size envelope. And here's kind of a mock-up if you wanna see that. So that is the final outcome of this tutorial. And we're gonna hop right into Illustrator. We're gonna create a new document and then I'm gonna show you, actually, I'm we're going to tell you how I took my actual lettering, just the image of it, and brought it straight into Illustrator without even having to touch Photoshop, which was really awesome. So first we're going to start with our document size. So I'm going to go File New. And this document's going to be sized 7 inches, which is the width of the card, by 10 inches because when it's folded in half, we want this to be 5. So we're just going to double it. And then we're also going to add on a 1 8 inch bleed, which is the standard print uh, bleed. So that is equivalent to 0.125 inches, which I have right here. And the color mode of CMYK is if you were printing it from a home printer. So we want to make sure our raster effects, or another word for that is resolution, is set at 300 ppi because that is the print standard resolution. And when you have all of this, hit OK. All right, actually I'm going to grab that color palette and bring that over so we have that and then we're good to go. All right. Now that we're in here, we're going to bring in our lettering and then I will, I'll give you the color builds in just a second, but first we're going to bring in that lettering. So I'm going to go file place and I'm going to bring in the scan of my image and it's giant because um, it was brought in from my phone. So if you have a smartphone, this is a really nice workaround if you don't have a scanner and you wanna skip increasing your contrast in Photoshop, you can actually use an app. It's called Scanner Pro and I use it all the time. I think it's like two or three dollars in the app store and it's worth every penny. I use this, I can't even tell you how much I use this because I can take a picture of my lettering, which you can see here, I, I write in black very often um, when I'm bringing in artwork that I want to digitize. And because of the high contrast, that app is able to kind of make a scan of it where it just puts it in black and white. So all of my contrast is already taken care of for me. I don't have to do any adjustments in Photoshop. I can literally take the JPEG from my phone and bring it right into Illustrator and it's already ready to vectorize. So highly recommend that. I will put it on screen. Um, that app again is Scanner Pro. Okay, so I have keyboard shortcuts on the screen for this. You can see if I move it around. Um, so if you see this icon, that's the Alt key. And whenever you see this, this is my command key. If you're on a Windows uh, computer, just use Control whenever you see that image. Okay, so we are all good to go right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, now that I have my document, I'm gonna hit Command R, Control R on a PC, and this brings up my rulers, and all I have to do is click and I can drag, and I can draw a guideline right at the halfway mark so I know that this is where the fold's going to happen for my card. And this is a little off, um, not angled correctly. So I'm gonna bring that in here. I'm gonna scale it up slightly. Remember to hold shift, that's the shift icon, um, whenever you're scaling, just to keep things proportional. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you the colors and then we're gonna jump into digitize, well, it's already digital, but we're gonna jump into vectorizing this topography. So I'm gonna blow up my color build over here. So this is the lime green. This is more the teal color. This is the blue. This is the dark blue slash grayish color. And then here's that pink. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to live trace this. And the reason why we're live tracing this is because we want it to seem more like it was actually drawn by hand, so it's more hand lettered. Um, if you are familiar with the pen tool, then have at tracing over it. I would put this on um, a layer, lock it, and then create a new layer above it so you can draw on top of it and see everything okay. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make it look um, very much like hand lettering, so we're gonna use an image trace. So I'm actually using the default uh, image trace up here, so I'm just gonna hit image trace and it's gonna trace it for me. 
If you'd like to go in afterwards and adjust or refine the trace settings, they are found right here. So if you click on here, these are all the defaults. So the important thing to know is if you increase your threshold, 120 is always the standard threshold, the default, it's going to look more true to the actual image that you brought in. Um, but when you do that, it's also going to add anchor points to it, which you can see down here. This anchor, whenever you increase the threshold or the paths, um, it's going to increase your anchors. And the more anchors you have in your document, the larger the file size you're going to have. So I'm going to knock this back down to 128. I'm going to knock this back down to 50. And we're just going to leave that like that. And we're going to leave our default settings. So once you have your trace already, just hit expand. And that will individualize every piece. And then we're going to hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC to ungroup. And then I hit Y on my keyboard. I'm going to select all the white and delete it. A lot of people like um, in their trace settings saying to remove white, but I found that I get like straggly pieces here and there that are invisible and it's so annoying later on. So I would highly suggest doing this way. It's never steered me wrong. I've had issues with the other way. So that's why I do that. All right, so now we can go in and we can start um, adjusting everything. So I'm gonna show you two methods that I like to use when I'm cleaning up uh, lettering because some of this looks pretty terrible. Like. If I come in over here, like these, these look pretty bad. And we want it to look like lettering, but we still want it to look like we cared enough to clean up these kind of messier spots that aren't so great just because of the settings that uh, live tracing applies. So there are two methods that I like to use. The first one is using your pencil tool, and it's okay if you don't know anything about the pen tool. The pencil tool is pretty awesome for this. So I'm going to double click on my pencil tool just so you can see these are my pencil tool settings. So if your pencil isn't working the way that mine is working, I'm in uh, Illustrator CS6 right now. And if you double click on your pencil tool, this is what's uh, what my settings are. All right, so with my lettering selected and then with my pencil tool uh, the keyboard shortcut for your pencil tool is the letter n this guy and all i'm going to do is zoom in here and with my mouse i can actually start on the path and just continue it and it'll straighten right up so that's pretty handy um, i can come in here and this is really fast and it still looks like it's hand drawn because obviously we're kind of still hand drawing it with our mouse but it's a lot cleaner and neater and it's way faster than using the pen tool if you don't need it super refined. If you need really refined artwork, then pen tool it all the way, but um, hand lettering is pretty forgiving just naturally. Okay, so that's, that's method number one. That's the one I use most often. Um, another method that I like to use is just going in with my uh, direct select tool, which you can get to by hitting A on your keyboard. And this allows you to toggle um, some of your handles around. So when I come in here, so this is an anchor point right here, this little guy that's kind of an open square. If I click on it, it gives me handles. So both of these guys are handles. So this one determines the direction this curve is going on this side and this one determines this one. And I can stretch it out and I can move it. And if, um, say I wanna move this handle but I don't want this one to move, in order to make that happen, all I have to do is hit Shift C on my keyboard and click on this handle and then I can drag it wherever I want it to go. And when, after you release, just make sure you return to your direct select tool by hitting A on your keyboard. And now whenever I move this handle, this is the only handle that's gonna move. It's not gonna move this other one. So that is how to make one handle move independent of the other. Okay, so if you come in here and say like, I don't need these two anchor points next to each other, all you have to do is hit the hyphen key on your keyboard and you can just delete those guys away, um, any extra points that you have. So I go back and forth between my direct select tool and then also my pencil tool. I'm actually gonna pencil tool this part because it's getting weird. Um, I'll just click that, make it feel more like an A. So 
they kind of work really nice together because I can draw with the A and then I can come in here or I can draw with my pencil tool and then I can hit A and then come in with my direct select tool and I could um, delete anchor points, I can move handles around, um, reduce whoops, reduce the amount of points that I've got going on. So I can get pretty precise uh, when I'm using my direct tool, select tool with my pencil tool, it's more free handing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come through every part of this and even these lines up here that are a little straggly in places. And I'm gonna speed up the video and I'm gonna clean this whole thing up Okay, so that's looking pretty good. You can see that it still feels very much like it's hand done, like nothing is super precise or overly perfect. It still has that handmade quality to it, but we've reduced a lot of the anchor points. So we, we have a friendlier file size and everything looks a lot cleaner than it did with just the live tray. So this part is important. It is a bit time consuming, but it's very important. So I can't stress that enough. Okay, so everything from here on out is really, really easy. Um, we're just gonna colorize this and we're gonna save it out and then it'll be ready to print and then we're gonna be done. So let me um, come over here and we're, we are going to create a kind of grayish bluish background for this and then bring in some lime green and pink. And if you wanted to, so this would be intended for a female. If you wanted to make it for a male, um, all you have to do is change this to maybe blue, change this to blue and then now we have a card for a male. So pretty easy with this design anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna pop back over here and that's why I gave you uh, kind of a bunch of different variety of colors so you can use whatever you'd like if you wanna use this color palette. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is set a background color. So I'm just gonna hit M on my keyboard and I'm going to go to my bleed line. This red line is your bleed line. So when you're cutting your paper, here, you're gonna cut into the color, so you're gonna have, um, you're not gonna have any white on your cut line, so everything's gonna look like it bleeds perfectly off the page, so when you cut it, it looks super pro, which is always really awesome. Okay, so I've got my uh, rectangular tool over here, my rectangular shape tool, and I'm just going to click and draw out a rectangle, and I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard and I'm gonna color this that dark bluish gray. And we're gonna put this on its own layer so it kind of stays out of the way in order to do that in my layers palette. Let me bring this up a little bit. In my layers palette, I'm just gonna hit this little icon for create new layer. I'm gonna drag this layer to the bottom. And then where this little blue square is, all I have to do is click and drag that. And that's taking whatever selected and dragging it um, to wherever I want it to go. So that is going to be my background layer. I'm gonna draw one more. So I'm gonna hit M. And since it's below the first layer, that's why it went behind um, my lettering right there. So I'm gonna draw out another one. This is just kind of fun to have a different color on the back of your card. And it also shows you exactly where the halfway point is when you're cutting it down. If everything's the same color, obviously you can just fold it in half, but I like having 
kind of a fun pop of color on the back. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is every little swirly line here, I'm gonna select all of these and then I'm gonna group them together so they always stay together. And I'm going to color this the pink and then I'm going to select my lettering and group all of this together and color this the lime green. And then we're gonna select all the other lines. So I was holding shift um, as I selected them so I could select them all together and I'm gonna group them together and then I'm gonna color these that lime green. And now I can select everything and then just hold shift and this will deselect anything I select. And since all this stuff is grouped together, now I'm left with just my dots. So I'm gonna group those dots together and then I'm going to color them pink. All right, so that's it. This is, this is done. So we're gonna save an Illustrator file and so we have our artwork as an Illustrator file so we can always come back and edit it later. So I'm gonna save this file, save as, birthday card, save it, and then we're gonna save it as a PDF. So uh, we have to make sure that we include the trim marks right here. These are called trim marks when you're in your PDF um, settings. So when we're in Illustrator, we're gonna go File, Save As, and now we're gonna choose down here to save it as a PDF and hit Save. And then when you're in this PDF dialog box, you're just gonna come over here to Marks and Bleeds and make sure Trim Marks is checked. That's very important, so we get our trim marks, but also make sure that Bleeds, Use Document Bleed Settings is checked. If it's not checked, um, you're not going to get the color that extends past your lines here. Um, it's just going to be a tight white edge and then you run the risk of having white when you cut your card. So just make sure when you are saving your PDF that use document bleed settings is checked. Those are the two main things that you want checked. Hit save PDF. And now we have a PDF that is totally good to go. So I can come into Reader and I can open it up and we're gonna go grab it. And this is what we just created. And you can see we've got our trim marks right here and we can print this right out on any eight and a half by 11 or A4 size paper because our entire document um, was seven by 10. So everything works out. And once again, this will fit in any A7 size envelope. Um, the American size is seven inches by five inches. Um, as this card. So that's how to create a hand-lettered birthday card in Illustrator from start to finish. If you need links to the Scanner Pro app um, and also this mock-up that I showed you at the beginning, uh, if you're looking for mock-ups for your greeting cards, if you plan to sell them later on, I will leave a link for uh, mock-ups to kind of show your cards off in their best light too. So all of that is in the video description, so make sure you click on the link there. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.